stock market weekly chart review for the week of October 10th through October 14th. Let's start by looking at the various sector weightings that make up the S&P 500. We're going to use the S&P 500 as a proxy for the overall stock market. S&P 500, the Qs, those two are kind of used quite a bit lately. Seems like for several years it's been the S&P 500. And over the last couple of years, the Qs, technology stocks, have, have uh, become more prominent in the overall movement of the stock market. However, for the, the sake of time, we're going to stick to the S&P 500. Plus, I trade the S&P 500, so I don't really want to pay attention to it. And so I am here over at Yahoo Finance, which you can do too. I put in uh, SPY. It pulled up SPY. I went under holdings, and it shows me the overall portfolio composition. And we see technology stocks at around uh, 23 and a half, a little bit over 23 and a half percent, which is down considerably because I think it was almost 28 percent a couple months ago when I first started making these videos, weekly chart reviews. And then we have healthcare, a little over 15 percent, which I think is up a little bit. And then we have our financial stocks, which definitely has creeped up a little bit over 13%. Consumer cyclical, maybe right around that same amount. And this week we're swapping out real estate because of some fidelity issues with their website. They had a typo, a lot of data. Nonetheless, we're swapping that out with industrials after um, consumer cyclical or consumer discretionary the next next one would be this 8.27 so I went through and found various ETFs that represent those sectors XLK representing technology XLV representing healthcare XLY representing consumer discretionary XLF representing the financials and the XLI industrials. Here we are looking at the S&P 500 on a two year chart. So from left to right two years, each of these red or green things, a candlestick represents one week of trading. This is volume at the bottom. This is a 200 day moving average here. This kind of whatever color that is, is a 50 day moving average. And this kind of purplish, lavenderish, whatever color that is, that is a 20 day moving average. And we see that the S&P 500 is down here at the 200 day moving average. If it really mattered to me, I would find some videos where I had said that I think we're going to end up touching the 200 day moving average. And I would, I would put a link to that video right there so I could beat my chest and say, ha ha, look at me, I, I called that. But you know, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to link to a video right here that will give you some basics of selling options. Because I think helping you get in the mode of, of mastering the stock market, it's going to take some time, not going to be one video mastery, but I think... Um, you know, helping you on that journey is much more important than patting myself on the back or, you know, proving to you that I did it so you can pat me on the back. Let's skip all that nonsense and get right into making some sense or trying to. So that's this is what that's what we see um, hitting that um, that 200 day moving average um, three weeks in a row. Right. The second this week here in the middle, we see that. Um, SPY came down here, tested that 200 day moving average, and then rallied up all the way up here. But look at that selling pressure just pushed it down last week. That's a very, that's a, that's a, that's a bearish sentiment because 
it, it, it went all the way up here in sellers just saying not having that people not not enough people feeling that these are accurate prices up here they felt that it was more accurate prices down here and you notice though that on the body not the full trading range if we look at the full trading range of of um that three weeks ago this body or the close end up being in the lower 50 percent <clears throat> so that was um uh, the week prior and then this week we opened up here we traded as high as here which is uh, kind of coming in the bottom of this big drop right here and you look over to the left and you see that starts creating this bit of resistance here and if we keep going to the left what is this is 370 you see it, it seems to be 370 if you're on the under 370 it's acting as uh, resist resistance and if you're above 370 it's acting as support and this week we touched started touching that yep we did we touched that 370 but uh, couldn't get above that resistance and selling actually brought it all the way down here below 350 but buyers rallied it back up here to 357 that might be one of your lucky numbers and and that's where we closed with what's our volume like um you know if you look back here we've just had these last one two three four five like six weeks getting close to two months of elevated volume compared to back here and overall if you just kind of take a quick scan over the last two years we're in some kind of elevated volume if we take an average we're probably out of all the volume for the average of two years it's probably probably a little bit higher but if it continues like this then you know that will become the new average but uh yeah so we had some some good selling volume and the technology sector looking looking similar right and one reason why it's going to look similar is because right now the technology sector definitely in the past made up a lot of the S&P 500 so whatever was happening with the technology sector can have a big influence on the S&P 500. We have a similar story, although the, the technology sector closed above its 200-day moving average. A really similar candlestick there. Uptick, look at that. Here was our average volume for like the last month, a little over a month. Here it is for going back a couple months. Look at that, massive, massive. If our average, vo sell, average volume was around 75, and then for almost a month, we're at 80, bumped up here almost to 90. And then moving into healthcare. Now healthcare, we see it's still, it, it's not, not as close to this 200-day uh, moving average as were the previous equities we looked at. But we have um, definitely looking like a, a, a doji with some long, <laughs> long wick and tail going on there, right? almost almost even uh, looking to be an indecision candle spindly looking thing this uh, that's similar to uh, S&P 500 and the XL XLK but a little bit moving up but still looking like some indecision we're kind of stuck in this range looking to the left 125 right, right there's we see that this 125 to 120 that's that's been common in the past to get stuck in there you go a little lower you see that it's got this trading range here so maybe uh, maybe the healthcare will be kind of be floating around in that range with uh, if you look back here June uh, June July uh, volume increased and uh, we've had an overall uptick and for about a about a month month and month and a week or so just elevated amount of volume in general xlf the financial sector Woo! look at that another little spindly looking thing isn't it amazing how i mean obviously they have differences but they've got a lot of similarities so one thing one thing that we notice is that last week's candle everybody's pretty much looking the same where we got this long wick to the upside selling just pushed it down now this where we're flirting at that 200 day moving average and we got this big um 
you know, spindly <laughs> looking doji candle floating right above that 200 day moving average with a big, uh, eh, you know, an increase in the, in the volume in the selling volume. And so we're flirting right around that 200 XLY for some consumer discretionary. All right. We we're still below that 200 day moving average and uh, got some support right here right in this area kind of congested in there but um if it continues to be below this 200 day moving average that's it's not looking good and volume similar it's been the last couple weeks been on the uptick with the uh, last two weeks been a significant uptick from back here in the june july area or august area but uh yeah we ended it up with um two weeks it's just been look at this increase so we had a big selling volume here dropped off but then from here increase in volume increase in volume and eh, kind of about the same so we'll see how that goes and to finish off with our newly beloved xli industrial sector below the 200 day moving average and what else drop down volume uh, okay we had a green week here which we got this long wick to the upside body a little longer than we than we saw for the other one so opened here closed here uh, below that 200 day moving average and then this week we got that selling volume come in and basically closed here just kind of went sideways for one week as far as prices go but not full price movement and again, as long as we stay on the bottom of that 200 day moving average, probably going to be more weight to the downside. So here is a line chart of the S&P 500 since going back to about 1993. And I, I drew this incredible channel here. Here's the top of our channel, the bottom. Now, academics don't get on me here. I get it. It's probably not. It's probably not as incredible as I'm making it out to seem. It probably could be done better. But you know what? For layman's terms, ah, it's good enough. We definitely see there's somewhere in this area is the top part of the channel, and somewhere in this part, this bottom part, is the bottom part of the channel. And this little ball right there represents where we're currently at. And you know how everybody was getting excited about the rallies of last, um, when was it, last week or I don't know, a couple days ago. Well, we see that uptick there, boop, coming down. Maybe it's going to be building a base, but considering, you know, the four different, out of these um, different sectors, right? Okay, that's not looking, We don't. I don't see anything bullish about that. All right. Okay. I could, um, I could see building a base significantly away from the 200 day moving average. Nah, nothing looking too bullish there. Ah, not looking too bullish there. Nah, not looking too bullish there. So yeah, you know, maybe it could be building a base or definitely it could be getting ready to go lower. And if I had to bet money on it, which I don't, but if I had to, I would say um, to the downside, unless unless we start hearing more rumblings or we get a full announcement of something that is going to mimic the results of quantitative easing, even if they call it a different name, no matter what name they call it, if it gets the same result, then we could see prices going up. Now, on this chart, in order for uh, to see a reversal of trend, right, because what, what can happen in this, as you see, has happened several times, right? It would rally up, fail, rally up, fail. This one, it really rallied up, kind of broke out here out of this little top of the channel, but really failed. And did a rally up, fail, rally up, fail, blah, 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 blah. and then it got a good rally up here, right? But it couldn't maintain it. It, it failed came down here rallied up tested it and failed so on the big picture if we're gonna see this sort of a reversal back to this 
you know, for example, here we had this huge, huge drop in 2020, the beginning of 2020. But then around somewhere, I don't know, April ish, somewhere in there, maybe a little before April, we started this bull rally. Now, we, we didn't fully know it was a bull rally we, until it's like breaks out of this downward trend, right? And then it, it maintains. Maybe right in here, we start getting the idea. And uh, I don't know where the you know, top of that trend line would be, something like that. So you see it get out here, you see it going up. And then eventually, look at this. This line and this line, it continues, right? Sort of. It's, it's not exact, but sort of there. So in order to get that same sort of you know, going up again like this, like that, we got to get out of here and we got to stay out of here. And then it's got to kind of do like that. So something that you can watch in the meantime to see if that's going to happen is this. If this starts breaking below the 200 day moving average, which it looks like it will, you could say, Definitely um, this one, watch this one, XLK. If the technology sector starts closing below this 200 day moving average, it's gonna put a lot of weight pulling the S&P 500 down. Right now, this is kind of a saving grace, but it doesn't make up as much weight. But you see what has been happening is they're changing the weighting. Technology used to be almost 28%. So what they can do is start shifting around the different sectors that are weighting the S&P 500 to try to get it stabilized more. But if they don't, as long as it stays, you know, kind of relative like this, then um, we got to see this one staying above the 200 day moving average. This is already, this is already below. This has got to get above its 200 day moving average. Same thing with with this one so we'll see how things play out what I'm personally doing with my own money is I'm doing a combination of things I'm doing mainly short-term option trades some long-term option trades that would be have me in a position to purchase stock or sell stock so I have some long-term um, uh, on one equity I, ha I had, and it's almost, it's getting close to expiration, but I had a, like a 50 day cash secured put option open. And there's maybe like eight days left on it right now. And also on that same stock, right now I just opened up like a hundred day covered call. Why so long when, if you watch a lot of my videos, they'll be talking about selling with like a, 30 days or less expiration. Well, why so long is because this particular stock doesn't offer many expirations. Really, those are the expirations that they offer me. And it's a stock that I'm trading. And um, if, uh, if things relatively remain the same of what I see going on in the world, I'll continue to trade the stock. And if uh, I buy more of it, I'm happy with it, then I'll sell more calls against it. And if I sell the, if I get assigned, the calls get signed, um, get called away from me, it would be about um, two dollars over what I paid for it. You know, and each uh, each option contract is a hundred shares, and I have X amount of contracts out, so I'd be making a, a decent amount of, mo amount of money. It doesn't pay a dividend. It um, it has the potential to shoot up. However, like when I'm looking at the weekly chart of it, it's been going down right now. So I can buy some more on sale, and then I'm doing I'm doing um, what else am I doing? Selling covered call options, selling selling more uh, cash secured uh, put options. I have, um, I have, uh, I uh, have uh, a put option open on a particular stock that um, it's going to have to go down a little bit more for me to really make some, make some decent money on it. But uh, right now um, it's kind of like, it's not moving enough. It's moving down, but it's kind of going slow, but I've, I've got like a, uh, I think I originally opened that one up with 100 days to expiration, right? Buy with longer days to expiration, so shorter days to expiration. And uh, a different particular equity, uh, I'm doing like maybe 14, 7 days expirations of um, selling 
selling cover call options on that one and uh, selling cash secured put options against it. And uh, that's one that I've been doing for a long time. If you want to know uh, that one, it's one of the three that I talk about. And you can go to IHaveSuccess.com, get this one, three stocks I sell cash secured put options on. That one that, I, that I'm um, selling within like 14 to 7 days, that is on there. The one that, uh, that I'm doing for like 100 days, it's not on there because it's, it's more of a niche type of thing. I, I wouldn't want to, you know, this one has a lot of strike prices, has a lot of expiration dates, and um, there's other reasons you, you can get that. Also get this, Cash Secured Put Stock Selection Guide. Give yourself like a bit of a framework to help you select different stocks. And um, of course, get that stock option Greeks cheat sheet. Get a quick cheat sheet. You know, at least you can have it on your computer. If someone's talking about the Greeks and you got a quick place to go and get a one sentence definition to know what it is, you'll know what it is. You'll, you'll, you'll know a textbook definition. Does that mean you're going to make money with it? No. That's the beginning, though. Could be the beginning for you. At least know a definition of what it is. And don't forget this. Three underused tactics to transform your financial results. I'm telling you the hardest one, but the most life-changing one is number three. Honestly, I don't think many people can do it. I don't think most people have the discipline and the determination, the overall tenacity to implement number three. But I hope you are one of those people. So download it, find out. You guys have a fantastic day. I will talk to you later.